Alright guys, welcome to your 33rd biology video, and in this video, I want to pick up where I left off in the last video, and that would be at step, let me draw my, step 4, because in the last video, we went through steps 1 to 3, and we ended up with a molecule called C6H10, I draw my 10s weird, my 10s look like 6s, 10O6P2. And of course, we called this molecule fructose 1,6-biphosphate. And what happens now is an enzyme called autolase, it actually splits this molecule into two smaller molecules. So it splits it into two molecules, and the molecules are C3H5O3P1, and another molecule that has the same formula, c 3 H five O three P one. Now the reason that I didn't just want to write two of the same molecules is that well let's go ahead and take note of what we did here. We started with a six carbon molecule right here. And now we have two three carbon molecules, one right here and one right here. However, these two three carbon molecules, the one on the left and one on the right, they're actually isomers, which mean they have a different structure or if we were to look at them under a really cool, powerful microscope, they would have a different shape. So one of these is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and another one is glyceraldehyde phosphate. So again, even though they look the same whenever I'm writing them, they have a different structure, and that's why we call them isomers. Now let's go ahead and move on to step five, since we now have our two isomers right here. That's our starting point for step five. So step five, what we do in step number five is actually one of the easiest steps. What we use is an enzyme called triose phosphate isomerase, and it turns one of those molecules into the other one. So remember that I said that we had two molecules that had the same molecular formula, but different structure. We're pretty much gonna take one of those and turn it into the other one, so we're gonna be left with two identical molecules. And the way this works it is it actually takes the molecule, let me get my color, dihydroxy, let me make sure I spell this right, acetone phosphate, I hope I spelled that right, dihydroxy acetone phosphate, which was, we'll just say it's the one on the left, why not, and it turns it into the molecule and I'm probably gonna run out of room here. Glyceraldehyde phosphate. And hopefully that's the right spelling. But basically what we need to take away here is the result of step number five is the enzyme, which is called triose phosphate isomerase. We have two identical molecules of this glyceraldehyde phosphate right now. So right now, remember, the key thing to take away, we now have two identical molecules. So for the rest of these steps, even though I'm going to be teaching you guys about, I'm going to show you guys basically what I've done up to this point, how the molecule is changing and how we get energy from it, remember that each of these processes actually occurs twice, one for each molecule, but it would be stupid for me to, you know, write the same chemical, you know, reactions twice. Just remember that since this molecule is now this one, we now have two of these molecules, so all the processes, or processes, <laughs> one too many S's there, that happen from this point forward are actually going to happen twice, one for each molecule. So now that's all step five is, turning one molecule into the other one. So now let's go to step number six. Step six. Now what step six does is it uses the enzyme triose phosphate dehydrogenase. And what this enzyme does is, let me go ahead and draw the enzyme because this is actually a pretty important enzyme. I think I drew my enzyme like this earlier on. What this enzyme does is it first takes a hydrogen ion from glyceraldehyde phosphate, which is, remember, the molecule that we have two of, and it gives it to another molecule called NAD plus to form NADH. And we're going to be talking about these NAD crap later on. 
But for now, I just want to show you guys that this is where it happens. And even though you guys don't understand what this molecule does now and why it's important, it's important later on. But for now, just remember that this is the point in glycolysis where it's made, and they're going to be useful later on, which we'll see. So basically, we have glyceraldehyde phosphate, which is C3. You guys remember H5. Show my H a little neater. O3. P1 and what this enzyme does right here is it takes a hydrogen ion which is right here these are parentheses on the left hand and right hand side of that and it gives that ion to and gives it to so say it gives this hydrogen ion to another molecule called NAD plus and whenever you give a hydrogen ion right there to NAD+, it forms a molecule called NADH. So basically, we're plopping, this enzyme right here is responsible for plopping a hydrogen ion off of this glyceraldehyde phosphate, and it gives it to NAD+. And the final thing we need to take away from here is in step number six, we form NADH. Now another thing that the enzyme does is it adds a phosphate group and the phosphate group comes from the cytosol which is pretty much the the fluid inside the cytoplasm and it adds a phosphate group to glyceraldehyde phosphate to form one three this is you know another long word I'll go ahead and write the structure for it. it's probably going to be a little bit easier what it does is it takes a phosphate again this is the enzyme that is responsible for this so once it's done doing all this crap its job isn't done yet. It takes a phosphate from the cytosol and it adds it to, let me go ahead and change my color, C, uh, it didn't change, C, 3, H, 5, O, 3, P, 1, which is, remember, this right here. And whenever you take a phosphate and add it to this, it now becomes this, C, 3, H, and be careful, uh, look at my molecular formula, O, 4, P, 2. And if you're like, okay, wait a minute, I think you messed up. C, 3, okay, that's good. H, 4, okay, hydrogen, yeah, O, 4, wait a minute, you have another oxygen added on here? What the heck is going on here? Because I thought you were just adding a phosphate. Well, actually, what we're doing is we're adding a phosphate group. And what a phosphate group is, it is a phosphate, of course, but it has some other atoms attached to it. And people just name it phosphate group because the phosphate is the key, the core backbone of it. But the reason that we have another oxygen, or we gained another oxygen here, is because that's how the phosphate group is bonded on. So just to recap one last time, we have an extra oxygen because that's how the phosphate group was bonded on. So now our final product of step six is C3H4O4P2. But remember, we have two molecules of these because this step is occurring once for each molecule because remember, that main molecule that we were working with split in half. So one last time, step number six, it can get really confusing. This enzyme here does a lot of work. This is one of the hardest working enzymes in glycolysis. The first thing it does is it takes a hydrogen ion from this molecule right here, C3H5O3P1, and this is called glyceraldehyde phosphate, and it gives it to NAD+. And whenever you give a hydrogen ion to NAD+, you form NADH. And this is very important later on. Right now you're like, okay, this is just stupid, but this is actually extremely important later on. So once it's done doing that job, this enzyme isn't done working yet. What it does then is it gets a phosphate from, it's pretty much a phosphate that's floating around your cell, and it gives it to C3H5O3P1 to form C3H4O4P2. So this is the molecule that we're going to be working with at the beginning of step 7. And remember that the phosphate group is bonded on by an oxygen, so that's where we get another oxygen. But the important key to take away on, on this is we now have two molecules of this crap right here. So that's where we're going to be starting in the next tutorial. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.